What's up, nerds? Uh, yeah, we're building something today. It doesn't look like much right now, but this is gonna be my outdoor office slash podcasting domain slash workspace. Um, it's part of you know finding that work-life balance for me that I'm working on right now, and I'm pretty stoked about it. I think you guys are gonna love the finished product of this. I know this isn't like a specifically fishing-related video, but I promise you, a lot of fishing stuff is gonna go down with this pod. So I've got a little bit of help right now. I've got my father-in-law here and he's gonna help me start building this thing up. There are a lot of steps. There's a lot of parts as you can see and they're all heavy. So we're gonna time-lapse this baby and start working on it. If you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring that notification bell and then come back for more stuff like this. Once we have this pod up, we're starting a new podcast. We've got all sorts of cool stuff going down here real soon. So this is one of those big steps, uh, I'd say in general, in life, in work, and with Burley Fishing. So I'm really excited for this. Should also mention before we kick things off that this is from Autonomous. So if you guys wanna go check them out, I'll have a link in my description as well as a link in the top comment. So you can go see what this is all about. If you wanna get your own outdoor office space, man cave, work area, video game shrine, whatever the hell you wanna call it, uh, consider checking it out, use my link. It'll give us a little kickback here of the channel, helps us out a ton. Um, I know it's a pretty big purchase, so if you're not looking for that, they also sell a ton of fantastic stand-up desks. They are powered, push of a button, you can go stand up to sit down. I've been using one for years, and they also make fantastic office chairs. So if you wanna check that out or share it with coworkers or whatever, friends, family, all the works, do that, use our link, we appreciate you guys. Let's get this process going, let's do it. boxes but look at this we did stuff we have we have we have a corner how many quarters does it take to make a house mom <laughs> is it four, four. Oh. we're gonna get there all right so it's day two i'm gonna catch you guys up a little bit on what's been going on so we actually had to shift the entire setup when we were trying to level this thing out it was just on too much of a slant you guys can kind of see this slant next to my house right there so there's a house there's that, it just kind of dives down in that corner. So we pulled it back about five feet. And then in this spot, we ended up having to do this. Check this out. We had to dig down for the leveling blocks and look at this from the front. There's that block. That block's fully exposed. And you can really get a good idea of that hill right there. So if you're building on a hill, it's just kind of what you gotta do. Dig that down, make sure it's level and flat and then you can adjust these with these cool little bolts here like that it was a fun experience um it took some engineering but we figured it out so today we are trying to our goal is hopefully by the end of the day to get all these walls up uh, on three sides because this side is actually going to be a sliding door so we got two more walls we're going to do right here next we got the back wall which kind of goes up on this slant and then we got the high walls, the heaviest ones right here. So we'll see if we get to those. We're gonna do our best, come along for the journey. I'm pretty sure this is a bad omen. Um, this tree just fell at my new office. Just I just heard a cracking and then just, boom. this tree just fell. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Would I joke about such a very serious thing? It must just be rotted all the way out. What the heck? All right, well, that was cool. Yeah. I was trying to figure out how the heck could those walls have fallen down? I, I heard cracking and I was like, oh no. And there, there's no way those are gonna fall. They're sturdy as heck. Stop trying to kill my office. Oh, 
<laughs> Look at that. It's an office pod. All right, you guys, end of day two. And this is what we got so far. Today, I woke up, we only had a floor. There were no walls, there was no roof. And uh, thanks to a whole heck ton of help, we got through a whole bunch of stuff. Right, Em? Yeah. yeah. We'll give you a walkthrough of what we got so far. Right, so we have our little main deck area, right? This will be a sliding door in this region. We've got this cool little wall here. So today we put up, I think 10 panels. So we have this panel and this panel, which has electrical, which had to plug in there and it has a plug up here. But in this panel, 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 and this panel. And then we put in four roof panels. There's one, two, three, four. So essentially closing everything in, those are all the walls that come with this kit. So a whole lot of boxes are done. Here's what my children are doing with these boxes right now. $30,000 worth of boxes right here. So you got that. And then they built a fort. Look at that little house, it's super cute. Do you think you should like WWE on there? Like just like choke slam your sister onto the boxes? Body slam her? Yes. DDT? Whatever works. Anyway, so here's where we're at. We've got, you know, pretty nice. I mean, I don't think, there hasn't been a lot of like blemishes. So I think shipping wise, they do a really good job. There's like one little notch right here that I've seen. Otherwise, all the inside walls have been good. Floor has been good. Other than us walking around, it's just dirty. So we'll wipe the whole thing down later. I'm noticing different things. So we got a plug for a ceiling light right there. So it'd be one big ceiling light. We're gonna get some good natural light. The main reason I didn't have this the other way is because the sun gets to its highest point over here. And that would just be glaring in my face. So this is kind of nice the way it's set up. And the other thing I've noticed is that I won't see my family at all. This is great. So if they wanna go play and do stuff and like you know, do whatever they want, they'll be in there. I'll have an Amazon Alexa hooked up in my office that they can call me on if they need me in case of emergency. Otherwise, this is like a seclusion area where I can just get a heck ton of work done. And this is my view. Like, look at this, look out this window. Just woods there, out here. We're gonna have all that. It only sounds echoey, by the way, because I don't have my uh, sliding door in yet. Once this is all sealed in, this is basically like a sound chamber. It's gonna be really nice. Did you have fun today? I didn't build it. I know, it's been great. All right, so day three, I'm, I'm basically I'm gonna end up today tightening everything up, check over the instructions again. Tomorrow the goal is to get the sliding door in as the heaviest, most dangerous, most difficult part, other than the roof. The roof is pretty difficult. But we'll get the, the sliding door in and there's a triangular shaped window that goes above the sliding door. So we'll get those two pieces in and with that, it'll be sealed in, which would be nice. What's nice about this setup right now is I don't have to tarp this tonight. It's done, we're good. We're gonna get rid of this tarp that's on the ground. Yeah, once the sliding door is done, the rest is really just the little stuff. Nailing on a ton of boards so that it looks pretty. So we'll get to that point. All right, see you guys tomorrow. <sighs> All right guys, day three, the most frustrating day so far. And it's mainly because there's just a lot of moving parts on this thing. So the good news is Autonomous has a pretty solid help team. Uh, so they're helping us out, texting them a little bit. And right now we're just trying to figure out this frame. So this frame is crucial. We're gonna have a, the triangle window up there that we gotta install. We've got the sliding doors that are going in here. So we're just trying to line this thing up right now. We're messing around. Uh, the biggest issue we ran into is there's a little bit of a gap here, but that's okay. We're gonna seal it up. We'll figure this out. Then after that, it's just waterproofing, throwing on all the panels, uh, installing all the computer equipment, doing everything else. It's, it's not that much, it's fine. We're fine. Okay, day seven, probably, I don't know. We took a couple days off. So next up is probably the messiest job. And I'm gonna bring you up to the roof with me so you can see what I'm talking about. I almost just fell, totally fine. Okay, so I just started this gig and then I remembered that uh, I have a job to do, which is record this process. What we're doing is we're taking this wet patch roof repair stuff and uh, we're just gonna smear it over all of these seams. So we're gonna cover the seams. It's gonna spill over about an inch or so on either side, making it impossible for water to get in. But to make it even more water impermeable, per permeable, water impenetrable, there's the word, is we're gonna go ahead and take like this big thick like rubber tape called bitumen. You know what? 
bunch of words I don't know. Not my, not my gig, I'm not a builder, I'm not in construction, okay, give me a break. And we're gonna put that over top of this. We're gonna hammer it down flat. Then we're gonna go back and put more of this around the edges of it. Then we're gonna do building wrap around the outside of this. And then the siding goes on. So a lot of stuff goes into it, which is pretty cool. Making it super secure, water impenetrable. Okay, day whatever it is, I have no idea, but today we're gonna dress up the outside of the building. I uh, actually got two sheets here. We're doing a little practice this morning, just make sure I knew what I was doing. So we got two more layers to go up on this part of the building here, and then there's four sheets that'll go across the roof up there. Once it's wrapped, then we can finally start putting the siding on. So we are getting ever so close to finishing this whole thing up. And then we'll finish throwing the panels back up on here that were originally on. So there's like two boards there, I think two boards there, and then a bunch on these little lower panels. So this side will be finished with this type of wood. The rest is with these horizontal like composite decking strips, which are like these here, I believe. I don't know, we'll see once we actually unbox this thing. I gave up. I burned it all down. 
done with this. I'm just kidding. It's right back there. Hey, buddy. Oh my gosh, you guys, this has been such a journey building this thing. I've learned a lot along the way, which has been great. I would pay for somebody to build this for me 10 times out of 10 though. Don't worry guys, dad's here. <laughs> All right, so I had to call in uh, the, the major backup, the, the big guns. Construction guy Pop. <laughs> Construction guy Dad Paul is here and uh, we're gonna fix some problems. After much, after mucho discussion though, yeah. we decided that we're gonna loosen the screws up top here. That's gonna bring this window down it's gonna put some weight on this frame right here. And that's actually gonna put some pressure to close this gap here and close this non-existent gap here. <laughs> and then we're gonna loosen these screws. Yep. And we're actually gonna shim this section right here. And that's gonna push the frame this way uh -huh. and cause this to now be square. We're gonna mess with the, there's wheels in these yep. doors. We're gonna make some adjustments so that these are now square within the opening. Once all that's done, we'll take a razor blade, we'll cut all of our shims, snap them off, and then we will caulk with the colored caulk, probably silicone, all the inside of this whole opening, maybe not this side, but all the way to here. Yep. And then we will get some exterior colored caulk that matches the flashing out here. And we will caulk the entire opening out here. And then you will have a visually gorgeous opening that is gorgeous. now water well we'll say element proof <laughs> and then you should have a nice sliding door that has a, a very solid reveal mm -hmm. and uh works the way you need it to Okay, you guys, so the door is done. I worked really hard on this. Paul stood by and like watched for a while. As you can see from the video. Watch the time warp. Good job, friend. You're doing great. So, but this is the result. Look what we can do. You can open your I door. I can go in here now. <laughs> so we actually ended up like, check this out. This gap closed up quite a bit. We we're gonna seal that. We were able to finally latch this door. So this is locked now. Very ideal when you throw your computer in here, eh? <laughs> so now, you can shut it, make sure it's all the way in there, and then we can lock that, and now it's locked. Well, look at that. So you can see some beautiful shims. I think I'll leave them. It gives you like some good atmosphere in here, it right? It just shows that this is all you. Yeah, it shows that I made this. So the biggest thing that we had to do, I mean, and really probably what ultimately solved a lot of problems was we decided where do we want the gap, right? Because yeah. you could have had a gap here. You could have made more. <laughs> screwdriver is this good one <laughs> and so what we did what we did what we decided was that the door is fairly square yeah. but we wanted to fix the gaps in the corner so what we actually yeah. ended up doing was bringing this uh bringing this portion of the whole frame downwards yeah. closing the gaps here at the corners and then uh screwing these back in now the shims are great because they create a lot of pressure uh for the screws to go up against and then Jeff is going to come back in here and put some weather stripping inside of this crack yep. and then seal the outside and the inside. That's going to keep you waterproof and maintain temperature regulation for when it is very cold. Now, the nice thing about having the gap up here, it, this is where you're going to get the least amount of water trying to get in. Yep. You've got the roof uh, overhang on the other side. Um, and obviously it's the furthest off the ground. And the reason we did that again, just to make sure that you get the least amount of water inside. So, uh, and then we brought in the sides, uh, this side, just to make sure that the opening was square. Mm -hmm. With a square opening, um, that's where you want to start. That's the foundation of hanging any doors, making sure that the opening is square. And we are with less than an eighth of an inch of perfectly square all the way around. And then we tightened up all the screws and then it just came down to door adjustments. So the wheels go up and down there at the bottom. That's gonna fit, that's gonna tilt your door one way or the other. So this mm -hmm. wheel ended up coming up a bit. 
that made our reveal, which is this opening between the door and your uh, frame. Make sure it's even all the way through. That's how you're able to lock the door and make sure it shuts the way that it should. Crucial. We did the same thing on this side, but just because of the way uh, that the, where it locks right here on this side. Because of how the door is trashed. There's a tooth that kind of hooks in over here. Yeah. That hole is just a little bit too high. Made, made, it, made it very difficult to get a perfectly square uh, window frame, but we basically adjusted it so that it can lock. Now it's locked, it's not going anywhere. Yep. Um, and now you have a wonderfully operational door that you can open, close, and lock. Hooray! Hanging, to be fair, hanging doors is like one of the hardest parts of like finishing work. It's absolute garbage. It, it's really difficult. It really mm -hmm. is because there's so, like, it doesn't seem difficult, but there's so many components to it. Especially with like this odd yeah. shaped opening. Like, this isn't even a normal door area. You can't shim into a frame. These yes. are all solid and done. And then you got a triangle window. Yay! Shimming into a frame is much easier than 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 yeah. this just abutting a piece of wood. It yeah. really is. So this made it much more difficult. But I think we made the right decision. And honestly, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks good. All right, all right, you guys. It is time for the final reveal. We have finally moved into the pod. I'm operating in here. So check this out. First of all, we've got a little paver walkway. Leads ever so nicely up to here. And you can already see there's a pewter in there. Let's go inside and check it out. Doors are sliding so smooth. Step in, we got a little boot tray. That's gonna be important Michigan winters, you know? So slip off the shoes. Hey puppers, come on, dude. So I got a little bed for my pup. Already went ahead and added one sign. We're gonna get an SOS Dojo sign in here as well. That's the sales company I work with. Uh, we got a little Xfinity pod extending that Wi-Fi from my house. I had a lot of people ask me about that. Wi-Fi signal is great. I've done multiple calls today, no issues. Now, here's some really cool stuff. So we got the computer set up just like so. I ended up grabbing this like massive mouse pad mat. You guys should definitely do this if you get a bigger desk. These are so nice to have. It's like 13 bucks on Amazon. So we have that. We're rocking the Ergo 2 autonomous chair. This thing is epic. I've owned one for a long time. This is a new one, gray and white, that I'm digging. It's, you know, mesh back, so nice and cool there. That is some like premium foam padding, very comfortable. This thing is insanely adjustable. These arms go up and down, they slide in and out. You got the uh, lumbar adjustment on the back there, so that pad goes up and down, headrest up and down and rotates like that. And you got like the little arch option, you can raise it up and down, blah, blah, blah. It's got like crazy smooth roller wheels. It's awesome, one of the best office chairs I've ever sat on in my entire life, guaranteed. You'll love it. Then we got a little roller mat for it and nice little uh, trippy rug that my wife and I picked out, I'm digging it. As far as like the computer setup goes, this actually isn't the final, final setup. So I've always had my two monitors kind of set up this way. However, we're going to have one single dual monitor mount that is still in the mail. It's on the way, so I'm gonna swap that out later. In the meantime, I've got one, two of them from Mount It. Uh, the other one is from Mount It too, and it's pretty red. I found these on Amazon, really digging this. So this I'm used to from uh, my fishing adventures, this type of like rotational mount. Uh, so I picked these up, they're like 13, 16 bucks a piece, something like that and I mounted them to the wall. So that cleared off a lot of desk space for me. And speaking of desk, this is the pro model version of the autonomous adjustable standing desk. This thing is epic. This is like the middle size that they offer, not the largest size. The largest size is a little bit too big for this office, so we couldn't go with that. It's got a wider footprint though, so it's actually easier to kind of roll in and out with with your office chair. I ended up adding, thanks to the autonomous team, this cable tray in the back too, so I can hide a bunch of my cables back here and keep it clean, which is what I was going for with this whole setup. I uh, got my power strip there, and in order to make it even more clean, went ahead and did this. So I have this little like mountable power setup back here. Uh, again, off of Amazon, super cheap. I want to say 25 bucks, you got four outlets and four USBs on it, which is awesome. And all of this is being powered by this fancy little setup. So fancy. There's just a little outlet back here. And I ended up just hiding the cord in this nice little, again, Amazon purchase here, all the way up to here. So this is where all my power is actually coming from. And this outlet is probably the best outlet I can use for that because it's directly connected to 
this bad boy right here, all the power supply. So I'm running all power off of that. Now, the crazy thing is this entire pod, including the light, computer, air conditioning unit that I've showed you guys before is all running off of a single outdoor outlet on my house. So I've been working in here all day. Today was my first full day in the office. It's been awesome. Tested out the key lights and the new setup. They worked great and they're adjustable. So again, if I go to standing, I can move them up or if I'm sitting, I can move them down. Not a big deal. And yeah, the AC worked great too. So operating all of that off of this little remote uh, has been smooth. I don't know if you've noticed this on my desk, but my wife made me this for Christmas. Check it out. It's a freaking troll foot. It's from Harry Potter movies. I'm a nerd. She's a nerd too. So I love her and she got me that. She's awesome. Almost forgot this too. We got these like gray textured cubes to fill the, the cube spots in this little shelf that came with the unit. So that's been nice as well. Lots of storage in here for such a small space. All right, so end of the day, the pod is operational. Everything is in there and I'm gonna be working out of this thing full time. It's been a journey. This whole video is probably super long. Uh, I tried to, you know, speed up all the building parts. Of course, I skipped building this entire inside of it. I figured there was enough building on this whole video already. So we are already, already hit capacity on that. If you're thinking about building an outdoor office, I mean, you can get away with a shed. You're not gonna be super stoked because temperature wise, you're screwed. If it gets hot, if it gets cold, if it's anything other than mild, you're gonna suffer. If it's indirect sunlight, it's gonna get hot in that shed. So then you go and you insulate it but then you need power, so you add power. By the time you have a shed or some sort of exterior building that's you know just a small footprint, kind of like I have right here with this bad boy, you're gonna be looking at a lot of money anyways. So having something like this that's kind of designed for you, prefabbed up, all that stuff, is it's an awesome no-brainer type choice. So it's something I would recommend anybody to consider, especially if they work from home full-time. Like if you've got kids like I have during the summer, this is a necessity. You gotta have a space like this where you can get away, you can focus and get your work done so you can be more productive. And by doing that, I'm actually gonna get to spend more time with them and I'm not gonna be the, the yelling dad, right? The last person I wanna be is a person that's you know, screaming at them to be quiet because I'm getting frustrated and I'm just trying to write this one email and everybody's talking to me and screaming, blah, blah, blah. You get it if you're a parent and if you're not, Fair warning, that's what happens. So I think this would be good for my relationship with my family, with my kids, with my wife, everything. Also, just mental health wise, get outside. Like I've been dreaming about getting this thing set up since February, I think. Um, now I'm, I'm outside most of the time. I've got sunlight coming in, like I can see trees and stuff. This makes such a massive difference in my life. So if that's, if you're kind of in a spot right now, like I was, where I was operating out of my basement, no windows, pure dungeon, dim light, it sucked. And you want to just get outside. This is absolutely accessible. So the drawbacks to doing something like this, I think are necessary too. This is what I like to do is be as honest as I can on my videos. If it doesn't go together perfectly, you're dealing with a company that exists on the other side of the world. So while, you know, email communications were pretty good, I got to say the team and I, like, I probably sent them 40, 50 emails throughout this process. I texted their team. They were very responsive. They've sent me replacement parts for some of the things that didn't quite fit right. You're going to have missing parts. You're going to have parts that don't line up. Uh, it's just part of the process. I ended up picking up a few new tools to make sure I could get the job done. Uh, but they've, they've hooked me up. They've been very helpful throughout the process. It was very frustrating at times. So what I'd recommend if you're going to do something like this, if you're already investing, pay somebody to build it for you. Somebody who knows what they're doing. Somebody who's not me, somebody who's like a, a contractor or a carpenter would be fantastic. You might want to have an electrician on hand so you can get a better outlet outside like I'm working on. Um, there's all sorts of things to consider. It is not by any means, no matter how it looks on the website, simply like a Lego set that you build in your backyard. It's not. I know I didn't think it was going to be easy, but I definitely thought it wasn't going to be extremely difficult. It was extremely difficult. There's a lot. You're going to need a team of four or five people um, and you're going to need some people that know what they're doing. Like, for example, hanging this door, most complicated part of this entire process, even leveling the whole base, all of that, a lot easier as compared to the door. So having somebody who knows what they're doing, construction guy Paul, uh, come out and help me out. Luckily, 
he you know has done a lot of research or built a lot of this stuff he's worked on remodeling homes uh, he's done some flips you know the guy's got more experience than i have times 10 so it was helpful having somebody with that experience come out and do that with me so if you don't have a team get one hire a team hire somebody to help you with a labor portion of it like you might have to unload the truck like i did uh you're gonna have to drag all these big heavy pieces that are just awkward and heavy out back here set them up without dropping them and breaking stuff you need a team on your side and better if you have an experienced team people who have dealt with buildings before that's going to make a big difference too if i were to rate this on a difficulty scale of one to ten one being you know a duplo lego set for your kids and ten being like assembling a skyscraper by yourself with no experience i would give this a solid six six and a half right it's not easy Luckily, there's prefabbed wall pieces that, you know, there's, uh, I think, 12 or 16 between the roof and the, the other three walls. For the most part, you don't have to frame it. You don't have to insulate it. You don't have to wire it. All that stuff is done. Just you still have to pop it up and make sure that, you know, these parts like all wedge together properly and they, they don't always do that. So it is what it is. All in all, I think it's a great product. I think it's awesome that I've given feedback to the autonomous team saying like, hey, better instructions, video instructions, not everybody you're selling this to, probably most people you're selling this to are not contractors and don't have experience building. So you need to make it more friendly to them, people like me. Uh, and they're listening, which is cool. And you can go to their website now, you can already see some of the changes. The new models are a little bit different. Um, they're making it a little simpler. They're changing the door already. Lucky me. Uh, so they're doing a lot of stuff like that. Pretty great company, good quality products. 99.9% .9 of the time, I've been pleased with everything that they've sent me. And uh, they'll definitely work with you, which is great. And to me, necessary with something like this. Um, the other cool thing that they told me is that they're looking to contract like regional builders. So by the time maybe you look into actually getting one of these, if you're considering it, they might even have like a contracted team near you that can come out and build this thing. So you just pay for shipping, pay for building, get it done. Trust me, it's worth it. I don't care if it's two, three, four, five thousand $5,000. Like you spend 20 grand on a pod, you should spend the extra couple K to get a team out here to do it right for you. And then if they screw it up, it's on them, not on you. So all in all, would I recommend getting one of these uh, for just anyone? No. Would I recommend it for somebody who works from home full time like myself? Absolutely. If you have kids, yes, 1000% start saving your money up now and get something like this. It's so life changing. I can't even explain it to you. I'm, I'm on another planet now. If you guys wanna join the pod game and get your office outside, click the link below in our description. If you have the money or you can take out a loan or do like a home equity, I think it's worth it 100%. Um, this single-handedly, this office is gonna help me build my businesses uh, simply because I can be more productive and more focused. And I can edit more videos now more easily. So some more stuff will be coming your way and thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I'm glad it's over now. I'm glad that we're here. Be sure to subscribe, smash a like, ring that notification bell and we'll see you guys on future videos.